Halewood is a quaint town located in the heart of America, surrounded by lush greenery and enveloped in morning fog. A sense of tranquility permeates the area, characterized by well-maintained homes, manicured lawns, and amiable neighbors who exchange warm greetings. The town resembles a picturesque postcard, where residents enjoy a serene lifestyle distanced from the clamor of urban life. The streets of Halewood exude a peaceful and secure atmosphere, seemingly insulated from the troubles of the outside world. Yet beneath this charming facade, Halewood harbors its own shadows, much like any other community. Each inhabitant carries their own burdens, family conflicts, personal losses, or hidden struggles that often remain unvoiced. Behind the closed doors of numerous residences, stories unfold that are meant to stay private. Life in the town continues, but within every household and family, there exists an unspoken narrative. This concealed realm of undisclosed truths will serve as the backdrop for the tragedy that unfolds within the Hall family. Margaret Hall, a 70-year-old resident of Halewood, is known for her kindness and generosity. She has been a widow for many years, and her only son, Thomas, left town long ago. The people of Halewood see Margaret as the embodiment of resilience and nobility. Her garden is always in bloom, and her home radiates warmth and coziness. But behind this outward kindness lies something more. Margaret is a woman with deep inner turmoil and secrets that remain hidden from those around her. There are things in her past she prefers not to remember, but which continue to haunt her. Liam Hall, Margaret's 16-year-old grandson, recently moved in with his grandmother after a difficult period in his life. His parents' divorce and his father, unable to cope with his son's issues, sent him to Halewood, hoping that the quiet life under Margaret's care would help him recover. Outwardly, Liam appears to be a calm and reserved teenager, but there's something unsettling about him. His eyes, set deep beneath furrowed brows, radiate a hidden aggression. He rarely smiles and often retreats into himself, as if he's not really in Halewood, but somewhere far away in a world of his own thoughts and fears. As autumn settled over Halewood, a sense of foreboding began to creep into the lives of its residents, particularly around the Hall household. It started subtly, with odd happenings that could easily be dismissed as mere coincidence. But as days turned into weeks, the frequency and intensity of these occurrences escalated, prompting whispers among the townsfolk. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting an eerie glow over the neighborhood, Strange lights flickered in the windows of the hall house. Neighbors squinted through their curtains. Their curiosity peaked. The lights danced chaotically, illuminating the dark corners of the home, as if an unseen force were playing with the shadows. Some claimed to see fleeting figures moving behind the glass, while others heard strange whispers carried on the wind, murmuring words they couldn't quite make out. The atmosphere felt charged, as though something supernatural lingered just out of sight. Margaret Hall, usually a vibrant presence in the community, became increasingly withdrawn. Her once flourishing garden began to wilt, flowers wilting before their time, the vibrant colors fading into a dull, lifeless hue. Those who knew her well noted a distinct change in her demeanor. She appeared haunted, her eyes reflecting a deep-seated fear. Margaret spoke of restless nights filled with nightmares that left her gasping for breath, the shadows in her dreams twisting and turning into grotesque shapes that whispered her name. She confided in a few close friends, mentioning a pervasive feeling of dread that loomed over her family, as if they were being watched by something sinister. Liam, too, exhibited strange behavior. Once a cheerful and spirited boy, he became increasingly isolated preferring the company of the woods behind the hall house to that of his peers. Neighbors observed him wandering the forest for hours, returning with twigs and leaves clutched tightly in his hands, muttering to himself as though in conversation with unseen companions. He often appeared disheveled, his clothes rumpled and dirty, and the spark of joy that once lit up his face had dimmed, replaced by a vacant stare that sent shivers down the spines of those who encountered him. The whispers around town began to speculate that the Hall family was cursed, a notion fueled by tales of Margaret's family history, which some claimed was marred by tragedy and madness. The air thickened with anxiety, and residents began avoiding the Hall house, 
crossing the street to bypass it as if it were a source of contagion. The atmosphere in Halewood became charged with unease, each strange occurrence feeding into the growing fear that something terrible was brewing in the Hall household. Amidst the growing tension, a different narrative unfolded within the confines of the Hall house. Liam, now 13, had developed a close bond with a girl from his school named Emily. They shared a love for adventure and a fascination with the mysteries of the world around them. Emily was a vibrant presence in Liam's otherwise darkening life, drawing him out of his isolation and igniting a spark of hope within him. Their friendship blossomed during their long walks home from school where they would explore the woods together, concocting fantastical stories and letting their imaginations run wild. They shared secrets under the canopy of trees, creating a world that was entirely their own. But as their bond deepened, the dynamics began to shift. What started as innocent friendship slowly evolved into something more, and Liam found himself falling for Emily, her laughter brightening the shadows that had begun to encircle his heart. However, their relationship was fraught with complications. Margaret Hall, already plagued by her own fears and anxieties, became increasingly protective of her grandson. She sensed the intensity of Liam's feelings for Emily and disapproved of their closeness, fearing that any outside influence might further destabilize her already fragile world. She often warned him to stay away from Emily, insisting that he focus on his studies and keep his head out of the clouds. Despite Margaret's stern warnings, the pair continued to meet in secret. They would sneak away to a hidden grove deep in the woods, far from prying eyes. Here, they carved their initials into the bark of an ancient oak tree and made promises to one another that felt as solid as the earth beneath their feet. They whispered dreams of a future where they could escape the weight of their families and the darkness surrounding them, living free from fear and filled with hope. As they grew closer, Liam began to confide in Emily about the strange occurrences that plagued his home. He told her of the strange whispers and the visions that haunted his grandmother. Emily listened intently, her brow furrowing with concern. She believed in the power of love and light and reassured him that they could overcome any darkness together. But as their bond grew deeper, the shadows around Liam seemed to thicken, casting an unsettling pall over their once bright moments. Unbeknownst to them, Margaret's growing paranoia about the outside world intensified. She began to suspect that Emily was not just a friend but a potential threat to her plans to keep Liam safe. Torn between love and duty, Liam found himself trapped in a precarious situation. His heart longed for Emily, but his loyalty to his grandmother bound him in ways he struggled to understand. One fateful afternoon, as leaves crunched underfoot and the sun dipped low in the sky, Liam and Emily returned to their hidden grove after school. The air was charged with excitement, but a sense of foreboding loomed over Liam. He couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to change. As they settled into their usual spot beneath the oak tree, Emily's laughter filled the air, momentarily dispelling Liam's worries. They shared stories and dreams, oblivious to the shadows creeping closer. But the moment was short-lived. As they prepared to leave, Liam noticed something unusual just beyond the grove, an old, weathered trunk partially buried beneath a tangle of roots and moss. Curiosity peeped. They approached the trunk. It was adorned with strange symbols, the same ones Liam had seen in his grandmother's home. The sight sent chills down his spine. What do you think it is? Emily asked, her voice tinged with both wonder and apprehension. Liam hesitated sensing that this discovery was somehow linked to the strange occurrences plaguing his family. They worked together to pry the trunk free from the earth, revealing a rusted lock that had long since given way to the elements. With a surge of adrenaline, Liam forced it open, the hinges creaking as the lid lifted. Inside, they found a collection of old, tattered letters, some fading and illegible, while others were intact, revealing the handwritten fears and regrets of generations past. One letter, in particular, caught Liam's eye. It was penned by his great-grandmother, detailing her descent into madness and her belief that a dark force had infiltrated their family line. The letter spoke of rituals meant to protect the family, but warned of a lurking evil that sought to claim them. The final words sent a jolt of terror through Liam. We are not safe. 
The darkness comes for us, and only those who heed the warning can escape its grasp. As they read through the letters, Liam's heart raced. He realized that the fear his grandmother had lived with was rooted in a legacy of trauma and superstition. The shadows that haunted their family weren't merely figments of imagination. They were a legacy passed down through generations, a curse that seemed to manifest physically. Emily, sensing Liam's mounting anxiety, placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. We can break this, Liam. We can figure it out together. But as Liam looked into her eyes, he felt a cold wave of dread wash over him. They were in over their heads, and he feared that their love might not be enough to shield them from the darkness lurking within his family's past. With the letters in hand and a growing sense of urgency, they knew they had to confront Margaret, but a chilling uncertainty gripped Liam's heart. Would she welcome their discovery? Or would it ignite a darkness that could consume them all? The weight of the discovery loomed large, and they were left standing in the shadows of the ancient oak, unsure of what awaited them next. As Jennifer Marsh pushed the door open, an overwhelming stench of decay filled her nostrils, making her gag. The darkness inside the hall house seemed to swallow her, wrapping her in a suffocating blanket of dread. Each step she took echoed ominously in the stillness, and the feeling that something was terribly wrong intensified with every heartbeat. When she entered the living room, the sight that met her eyes was beyond anything she had ever imagined. Margaret Hall's lifeless body lay sprawled on the hardwood floor, her once vibrant gardenia pattern dress now soaked in a pool of blood. The room was in chaos, overturned furniture scattered across the floor and family photos smashed and left in disarray. It was as if a violent storm had torn through the house, leaving devastation in its wake. Margaret's face was barely recognizable. Deep gashes marred her skin and bruises disfigured her features. Her eyes, usually so full of warmth and kindness, were now blank and staring, as if witnessing something unfathomable in her last moments. Jennifer's heart raced, and a scream erupted from her lips, sharp and piercing, reverberating through the still air. The sound cut through the silence, prompting nearby neighbors to peek through their windows and step cautiously onto their porches, drawn by the commotion. As Jennifer stumbled backward, her eyes fell on the walls, which bore strange markings, symbols drawn in what looked like dried blood. Their shapes were hauntingly familiar, yet grotesque, hinting at something ancient and sinister. The air felt charged with an ominous energy, pressing down on her chest and making it hard to breathe. Shadows flickered around the room, dancing in the corners of her vision, leaving her disoriented and terrified. When neighbors finally arrived, they found Jennifer outside, trembling and pale. She could barely form words, only able to point back toward the house, her voice choked with fear. As the police were summoned, the residents of Halewood gathered, whispering in hushed tones, eyes wide with horror and disbelief. The arrival of the police brought a mix of relief and anxiety to the townsfolk. Officers, trained to handle everything from minor disturbances to serious crimes, were ill-prepared for the grotesque scene that awaited them inside the hall house. They moved with grim determination, securing the perimeter and ensuring that no one else could enter the house before forensic teams arrived. Detective Sarah Matthews took charge, her years of experience hardening her demeanor. She had seen a lot, but the brutality of Margaret Hall's murder shocked even her. She began documenting the scene, noting every detail, the positioning of the body, the condition of the room, and the eerie symbols that adorned the walls. She felt a chill as she realized that this was not a crime of passion. It was calculated, deliberate, and filled with malice. Forensic specialists quickly set to work, collecting evidence and photographing the scene. They donned gloves and masks, cautiously approaching Margaret's body. As they examined her wounds, the gruesome nature of the attack became clearer. The deep cuts suggested a weapon of considerable sharpness, and the lack of defensive wounds indicated that Margaret might not have had time to react. As the detectives combed through the house, they found more unsettling signs of turmoil. The kitchen was a chaotic mess, with cabinets thrown open and items scattered across the floor. A dining table was set for two, the remnants of a half-eaten meal still present. It felt like the family had been interrupted mid-activity, 
heightening the sense of violence that permeated the air. The police began interviewing neighbors, hoping to piece together Margaret's last days and any interactions she may have had with Liam. Whispers of strange occurrences around the Hall House had begun to spread, and detectives were determined to uncover the truth behind the horror that had unfolded. The forensic team worked meticulously, uncovering a trove of unsettling evidence. Among the first items examined were the strange symbols drawn on the walls. They seemed to be part of some sort of ritualistic practice, but their meanings were unknown to the detectives. As they documented the scene, they collected samples of the blood and took photographs of the symbols, hoping to identify them through a database of occult signs. In the chaos of the living room, forensic experts discovered several objects that piqued their interest. An old amulet lay beneath the coffee table, its surface covered in dried blood. The amulet was crafted with intricate designs, seemingly imbued with dark energy. Raising alarms about its possible connection to the murder, they also unearthed a collection of old photographs tucked away in a drawer. The faces of the individuals in the pictures were eerily cut out, leaving behind only the outlines, a disturbing reminder of the life that had once flourished in the Hall home. Alongside the photographs were burnt remnants of books filled with unfamiliar writings, as if someone had been trying to erase or hide something from the past. But perhaps the most chilling discovery was a set of letters hidden in the drawer of Margaret's desk. Written decades earlier, they chronicled her fears of a family curse and described terrifying visions that had haunted her throughout her life. She detailed encounters with shadows that whispered to her in the night, claiming they had come for her. The letters revealed Margaret's deep-seated fear and hinted at a lineage of psychological instability. Meanwhile, investigators found a journal belonging to Liam on the coffee table, but its pages were mostly torn out, leaving only fragments that spoke of nightmares and visions. The remaining pages conveyed a chilling descent into paranoia. Liam wrote about seeing his grandmother as something sinister, as if he sensed the darkness lurking beneath her nurturing exterior. As the investigation unfolded, the police began interviewing Halewood's residents, uncovering a tapestry of conflicting accounts surrounding the Hall family. Some neighbors described Margaret as a kind-hearted woman who had dedicated her life to her grandson. They spoke of her warm smile and the way she tended to her garden, which was the envy of the neighborhood. However, as they shared their memories, others offered unsettling tidbits that painted a different picture. Several neighbors claimed to have heard strange noises emanating from the Hall House late at night. Screams, shouts, and even what sounded like chanting. These accounts hinted at something darker within the household. Some residents mentioned seeing Liam behaving oddly, wandering through the yard at odd hours, staring at the trees as if in a trance. Rumors began to circulate, suggesting that Liam had been dabbling in the occult, attempting to perform rituals to cleanse the house of its alleged curse. The townspeople were divided. Some viewed him as a troubled boy in need of help, while others whispered that he was a harbinger of evil, capable of unimaginable violence. As the police sifted through these conflicting narratives, it became clear that the Hall family was entangled in a web of secrets and tragedies. Detective Matthews realized that the truth behind Margaret's murder might be rooted in the family's hidden history, possibly extending back generations. The deeper they delved into the Hall family's past, the more questions arose, and the more unsettling the atmosphere in Halewood became. With each passing day, the tension in Halewood grew palpable. Liam, now a person of interest in his grandmother's murder, roamed the streets like a ghost, haunted by guilt and fear. Residents watched him with wary eyes, their perceptions shaped by the rumors swirling around the town. Some offered him sympathy, believing he was just a victim of circumstance, while others recoiled in horror, convinced that he was hiding something sinister. As autumn deepened, the trees shed their last leaves, casting shadows that seemed to mirror the darkening hearts of the townsfolk. Detective Matthews and her team struggled to gather enough evidence to charge Liam, yet the facts were elusive. He had no prior criminal record, and while his behavior was concerning, there was no concrete proof linking him to Margaret's murder. The investigation gradually slowed, 
leaving the community in a state of limbo. Some residents speculated that Liam was either possessed by some dark force or that he had unwittingly been caught in a tragedy he could not comprehend. Others believed that the curse mentioned in Margaret's letters had taken hold of the family, leading to their downfall. The chilling memory of Margaret's brutal death lingered in the air, and the Hall House became a symbol of fear and mystery. Despite the passage of time, whispers of the tragedy continued to circulate, etching the events into Halewood's history. Ultimately, the murder remained unsolved, leaving a scar on the community that would never fully heal. The town that once basked in harmony was now shrouded in suspicion and distrust, forever altered by the darkness that had invaded the Hall household. As residents went about their lives, they could not escape the haunting question, what truly happened in the Hall house that fateful night, and who or what was responsible?